Hello there, Ari. Um, I feel as if um, November was a really busy month for you. There were a lot of expenditures, either, um, you know, like obligatory uh, things that you had to, to take care of financially, or even like recreational activities that just uh, drain your financial resources. I feel like this is the month in which you are kind of uh, sitting down, itemizing everything and trying to get your financial situation on track. Others of you, I feel like, you know, you might not be in the red, but you're just a little bit more cautious about where you're spending your money, who you're spending it on, as well as what you're really buying. I do see, once again, a lot of social events happening for you guys where there might be, you know, um, splitting up the cost and, you know, buying a lot of gifts. So it is the holiday season. So that's um, also something coming through. Just be careful about that. Um, I see a lot of like floral arrangements. So you're going to some um, places that are, I feel like, very upscale, fancy restaurants, fancy venue, very beautiful, um, you know, decadent places. Um, so that might be coming through for Christmas or the New Year. And um, I just feel overall, you know, you're going to some really, really... Um, uh, I, I would say like top-notch events, okay, like weddings and things like that. I, I feel a lot of places with a lot of flowers, like real flowers, uh, a lot of floral arrangements, which leads me to believe like um, um, engagement parties or even um, or, or even like weddings. So that's um, that, that looks good. Um, I do sense money coming through from your end to other people's end, okay, so that is gifts and... Um, even like paying off a lot of bills, credit card debt, and things like that, getting your financial situation in track, on track where you won't be uh, tied down, worried, or bogged down with that later on. So it, it looks good in that manner. Um, I feel like you have a lot of social functions, but a lot of you, your energy level is a little bit low, okay? So I feel like you're going to be a little bit drained, a little bit exhausted. And some of you, I do feel like, you know, feeling under the weather, feeling a little bit kind of like um, it's cold. I don't really want to go outside. So even though you have all these obligations, I feel like you, you are not kind of like dreading them a little bit. So I feel your energy level is, um, is a little bit low for this month. It's not bad. It's just a little bit lower than what I normally encounter when I read your energies. Um, they're saying as well, they're saying as well, there is um, offers coming through for love, but a lot of you are kind of hesitant. Uh, I feel like some of you are dealing with somebody who's very, very passive. They take a really, really long time to make up their mind. They're kind of like on the one hand, on the other hand, it might take them a really long time to decide on, you know, where to go for dinner. It might take them a really long time to like... Um, I, I see, like, you know, a lot of text messages um, exchange between you and another person. And I feel like it takes forever. So it, it feels like, you know, 20, 30 text messages before they they um, they ask you if you want to meet for coffee, before they ask you to meet for a date. And I feel like, you know, it's um, they might be a little bit older than you, a little bit more old-fashioned. But I feel that you're sitting back and you're you're just waiting for this person to just bite the bullet and ask you. And um, I feel like the other person is like on the one hand, on the other hand, and back and forth. And I feel that it might be a little bit frustrating for you, so just be patient. Um, I feel like once that that is um, over, you know, once those initial steps are over, um, the interaction is going to flow a lot easier. I just feel that a lot of you are getting impatient. So, you know, I feel like it's worth the wait. It's worth, like, you know, if it were an oracle card, it would be, like, worth waiting for. So it's worth the wait. Don't lose your patience. You know, just um, encourage them. Give them a little bit of encouragement because I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is just different from you and they're also very shy. And um, I feel like they're, they're just very methodical. So they take a really long time to assess situations before they rush in. I do see some of you... Um, especially on social media, I feel like, I feel like somebody is either, um, looking up a lot of your information, especially if you are thinking about like changing jobs. I feel like somebody is looking up your, your resumes, your, uh, account, professional accounts, or even your social media accounts. 
I do see an element of investigation, especially if you're they're doing like preliminary background check on you. For whatever reason, I do see somebody kind of like snooping in and trying to figure out if you know what you're presenting is the truth. So I do see an element of that, you know, like uh, questions, people questioning you. And uh, people really looking at your data, your profile, or um, things to make sure that you are not misrepresenting yourself. And I don't feel you're misrepresenting yourself. There isn't anything here that indicates like falsities. Um, what I'm also feeling is some of you could also be looking at the you know profiles, looking up somebody as well, just to see what they're up to, just to see what's going on, piecing the, um, getting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And then there's like an aha moment at towards the end of this uh, year. Uh, if you are like looking at other people's profiles, if you're doing a lot of social media stalking, okay? Um, the last thing I'm feeling is that uh, there's a longing to get away. There's a longing to like take a trip. There's a longing, like a deep longing to be like somewhere that is a little bit more tropical. So a lot of you might physically be traveling. You might be traveling with people you've known for a really long time, like family members. And a lot of you might just be like... Um, just longing for a vacation, wanting to go to the southern hemisphere, you know, and of course is um, it's winter time in the uh, northern hemisphere, so you might just be wanting to go somewhere else. I do sense that coming through. This kind of like strong longing for escape. So um, I feel that energy is going to settle and things will be okay. But I, I just keep seeing like longing for the sun. So um, let's go into your reading. Oh, one last thing that I want to say is. Um, what I'm feeling is that this is a really important month for to either reform your pu professional public image, to reinvent your professional public image, or to like fix, okay, so like to establish it or fix it or to, you know, do something new. So it's something on the public front, like professional public image, it comes out very, very strongly. And I feel a lot of you are taking a different approach when it comes to, you know, um, doing like like the way that you normally behave or the way that I, I feel some behavioral changes happening for you on the public front, on the professional front. OK, so let's go into your reading here. The first two cards that I have out here is the Ten of Cups as well as the Five of Wands. Now, the Five of Wands is shown up, up first, and this is a card about conflict, inner conflict or conflict between us and another person. And I do feel that, you know, uh, there are, there could be like social expectations, family expectations coming through, telling you to, you know, either conform, telling you that you need to do a specific thing. So I feel like, you know, these are like deep, lead rooted traditional cultural even family expectations of you so uh, those of you who are you know uh, married there might be expectations to get pregnant to have children to bring grandchildren into the pictures for your parents and then others of you um, I feel like you're surrounded you're in an environment where everyone is a certain way you know by a certain age they're supposed to be married by a certain age they're supposed to have a property or by a certain age they're supposed to have so many children you know in the picture so I feel like there is an inner conflict playing out between you ver between like you know family tradition going by you know like doing what other people expect of you and um, I feel like there's an element here of, you know, tradition, conformity, and even settling down to a stable, more relaxed, and more um, predictable lifestyle, or, you know, um, continuing where you're, what you're doing, which is like craving more excitement in your work environment, in your home environment, or even in your relationship. So I do feel like you're kind of reaching a stage sometime this month where you are dealing with a lot of like uh, people. They might be getting married. They might have like engagement parties. And a lot of you are just like, you know what? That sounds really nice. I'm kind of ready to settle down. But then I feel like for others of you, you want these things, but realistically, you're just like, I really want to find the right person to share my life with. So the whole concept about family planning, about, you know, what do I want in my romantic future? Or what do I want in my uh, to stabilize my life? These things are coming through. I feel a lot of you are going through a maturation process, you know. 
um, where you are reconnecting with your mother figure or like maternal figures in your life. And especially, um, well, especially for those of you who are watching this, who are like in your 30s and 40s, I feel like, you know, that, that whole concept about, you know, uh, leaving the past behind, wanting a more stable, structured uh, home life, and wanting to like seek the one to share a life with. I do sense that coming through for many of you. And you're grappling this dilemma within yourself um, about, you know, freedom versus restrictions. In the past, you might have seen family life as very, very karmic, very uh, troublesome, very difficult to navigate. But at this point, I feel that you are very appreciative of the people that are in your family and you might see value in them where you know if you ever you needed something you know that they're always there so not everyone gets along but everyone is always there for each other through thick and thin and I feel like a deep part of you likes that values that and you want to have somebody in your life to share that type of a unconditional loving bond with so I feel that you're grappling this dilemma between you know settling down or playing the field as well um, for others of you, I feel like um, you're, you're going through a period of reassessment and I feel like it has been for the past 10 years, uh, 10 months, okay, not 10 years, 10 months. So for the past 10 months, I feel like some major changes has uh, happened in your life. Either a, a major home move, a major relationship that uh, came to fruition or something major, like, you know, you could also be going through, like, uh, in your 50s and going through what seems like a midlife crisis. You might be tur just turning 30, uh, hitting your Saturn return, and feeling a lot of responsibilities are kind of, like, uh, bearing down on you. And you're trying to, you know, reassess, like... Um, what can I do differently so that my life is not so burdensome? What can I do differently so that I still have, you know, full mobility and that I'm not bogged down with too many responsibilities? So I feel like these, you know, big existential questions are coming through as it relates to whether or not you're ready at this point to settle down. And I feel that those of you who are settled down, you're you're wanting more. You're wanting more excitement. And I feel like your soul is craving for more. And it feels to me that, you know, you can take a temporary break, uh, take a temporary journey, voyage, in order to figure these things out. So don't do anything drastic, okay? Hold off on do make, making drastic decisions, especially for this month and going into January. Mainly because it is Mercury in retrograde, but also because these questions are coming up as... Um, uh, it, it's an opportune time for you to re-examine these issues. It's just not a time to make any drastic life changes at this present moment, especially if you're grappling with the freedom versus restriction um, dichotomy in your own life, okay? Um, so the next two cards coming through, we do have the Prince of Wands. This is your energy. This is a very, very easily excitable person, somebody who's very adventurous, who's very bold, who's very, um, I, I want to say like a little bit impulsive and, and rash as well, okay? Um, this is a fire sign. So this is representative of you, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And um, I do feel that what I'm sensing here is that um, a lot of the times, well, it's linked up here with the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles in this situation, it deals with like business expansion, generosity, and it deals with like a very good energy that indicates to me like good karma coming back through, okay? So I feel that in your dealings with others in the past, a lot of you have been very like open-hearted, open-handed, you know, when you're dealing with other people and you've always wanted, you, you know, to like not rep not misrepresent yourself you've always tried to be like very um on the up and up when it comes to you know um being truthful being honest and being helpful to other people i do feel they're they're saying there's some blessings coming back home to roost like good karma being uh repaid for this month especially with this card and it's right under you which basically means that whatever good deeds you've done in the past is coming through this is a good month for any type of generous acts 
volunteering, giving at a church, like giving alms to other people, giving to uh, shelters or even, you know, people like uh, homeless people in the streets as well, like peddlers. So I do feel like some good karma coming back home to Ruth. And um, it's just a good month for you to do some, some charitable act because I feel like it can pay, uh, it can pan out really well for you, okay? And I mean, you know, in the spirit of giving, it's not always about what we get back, but I do feel this is the uh, good month for you to see like a lot of the things that you have given out come back to you in a different way, but in um, an equally magnanimous manner. So I, I feel like it's coming back through in a very uh, beautiful way. So I feel like you you can you know count on some good blessings coming through for this month, and I do feel a lot of it is like um, I do see gift cards, I do see like um, you know little financial windfalls here and there. Um, going to a store buying something and then you know automatically like they're all of a sudden they have like a sale and then you get like a, a promotional item on top of whatever you bought so I feel like a lot of little luck sprinkled into the month of December for many of you and a lot of it has to do with you know being generous in the past and then things coming um, to you in a very beautiful fruitful way okay so like unexpected blessings coming through um, be careful about overspending. So I feel like for those of you who are dealing with um, financial stress and strain, and especially if you are kind of like in the red financially and you're trying to do Christmas shopping, um, you know, take take time to explore because I feel like that's coming through for those of you, especially if you have been um, kind of struggling financially. I, I feel like there are little blessings here and there to help you, okay? Um I do see a lot of like bonuses, uh, uh, royalty checks being made out to you. And um, I also feel people coming to see you as well. You know, they're coming to see you or they're asking you um, to have meet them for lunch and, and dinner and things like that. And then like the meal is paid for. So that's what I'm, I'm sensing with this card. It's like divine intervention in a very good way to like um, bring bad good karma. So it's, it's very positive, okay? Um, the next cluster here deals with the Princess of Wands and the Queen of Pentacles. So the Princess of Wands, this is the Page of Wands, which uh, traditionally denotes a messenger, okay? This is news regarding projects, contracts, and it deals with like uh, minor, minor, um, I, I would say like... Um, Creative projects as well for those of you who are in the creative field. Um, especially if you're in the creative field, there is going to be a lot of financial abundance coming through here with Queen of, uh, the Queen of Pentacles. So this is not like another energy I'm sensing. This is more kind of like what you're willing, like the skills, the assets that you're bringing to the table and how you are being rewarded. So I feel that for some of you who are on a contract basis or you are working on a commission basis, I do see a lot of like good news coming through on the financial front as it pertains to like signing contract, retaining a very lucrative client, as well as like uh, job opportunities coming through, possibly from like outside the city uh, further away and I do feel like you're you're just like if I take up this job I'm gonna have to travel so you're kind of uh, weighing the pros and cons of whether or not to relocate to move for a job a lot of you are just waiting back to hear back from a job and I do sense it's going to going to be um, in your favor it's going to be very fruitful where it's gonna bring not only like financial stability but it's gonna bring a lot of professional success as well so if you have been applying for work I do feel this is the month in which you know you're starting to get those um, callbacks you're starting to get like um, uh, you know just um, keep your phone keep your phone um, free and, you know, try to um, not turn it on silent when you can so that you can, you know, physically be there when the other person calls. And I do sense like, some good news coming through on the financial front as well, okay? Uh, what I'm also getting is that I feel for some of you... Um, I feel for some of you if you have been sharing space with another person... If you have been sharing space with another person, like um, if you, you've been living with another person, if you're renting out a room, if you're like the uh, homeowner and you're renting out a portion of the house or a portion of the room, there's some talks about, you know, raising the rent. Um, I don't feel that it's going to be bad at all. I feel that it's, um, it's justifiable and I do sense there is some money coming through as it 
uh, pertains to like tenancy, um, people renting out your space or, you know, things like that, especially if you're a homeowner. If you have been waiting for somebody to occupy like a home uh, to rent out, if you have been looking for tenants, I do feel this is the month in which, you know, you can find a very, very stable long-term tenant, okay? Um, for others of you, uh, if you are dealing with an earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and um, I feel for many of you, if this is an earth sign that is coming through from the past, there's some uh, type of gift coming through from the earth sign. There's very good communication, um, you know, such as like a, a greeting. If you, you have been kind of estranged from this person, I do feel that they're coming through with some type of good words and good blessings for the holiday season. Um, they could be wanting to get in touch with you and then there might be, you know, travel to see them or arrangements for to meet up somehow and reconnect or even to like, um, to reconnect or even to like, uh, just meet up and catch up. So I do sense that, uh, especially if they are more on the, the, the feminine side, like if they're, it's a female, especially that's what I'm sensing. I'm feeling a very, very strong, um, feminine vibe with this earth sign. Okay. Uh, what I'm also getting is that there is going to be overall um, good news when it comes to bonuses, commission checks, and things like that made out to you. And I do sense, you know, there um, it, it's really going to help boost your professional life, okay? The last cluster we're dealing with here is the death card as well as the sun. And the death card indicates a major, major transformation, a major ending to some uh, things that you've been doing in the past, whether um, it's like... Um, I, I, I want to say like more so on the professional front, if you have been shifting from one job to the next, I do feel that at this point, a lot of you are landing a job that is um, going to lead to a career, okay? So you're not going to be bouncing around a lot anymore. You're like settling into a career. And then for others of you, if you have been kind of like um, jumping around from partner to partner, I do feel this is the month in which you're getting a little bit more serious and you're aiming for a little bit more stability. And then others of you, if you have been like, um, I see a lot of reform when it comes to your professional image. So I see a lot of you dressing differently, dressing, looking more professional, uh, you know, spending more money, like getting um, suits and, and uh, suits custom made or like, you know, um, outfits custom made, especially for the work front. And I do sense like the, the manner in which you speak, you are becoming a lot more professional is what I'm sensing. And then for others, I do sense like if you are on social media specifically uh, and you're friends with employers or colleagues, I do feel that a lot of you are kind of like going through social media accounts and, uh, you know, deleting things that might not... Uh, that might like rub other people the wrong way, especially on the professional environment. So if you're friends with them and they can see everything that you've posted in the past, I do see some purges. So let me talk about the past. So in the past position, we do have the Nine of Cups as well as the Six of Wands. The Nine of Cups basically indicates to me a situation where a lot of you might have like uh, dated around quite a bit without having anybody serious in mind, okay? Um, I do feel that, you know, a lot of you were kind of like, um, I I'm feeling that some of you were, um, you're like in a very good position financially. You make a lot of money. And I feel that you might have a lot of suitors in your midst. And I feel that for many of you, what I'm sensing is that um, they're, they're saying like dating below you. that And you know, they're, whoever you love, whoever you like, like these things are, um, people have diff different criteria for, you know, what makes a good partner. But what they're saying is I do feel that a lot of you were going, going around dating people that you had no serious like inclinations for. I feel like you were trying to fill up the time you were trying to like um, just have something to do, okay? It's not a good or a bad thing, and it's not a judgment call, but I feel that you were making the rounds, doing the dating life, and, you know, living the single life as well. But no one really, like, stood out for you. 
and I feel that you were surrounded by people that you you felt wouldn't be good relationships partner for you to begin with so you just wanted to have fun and I feel like that's what they meant by dating below you where you know you, you're looking at somebody and you're just like never in a million years would I you know uh, want to date this person or like see them exclusively but you're just having fun and you're you, you were just going through the rounds and to you know um, just have fun and, and live the single life. So I feel like that was what was happening for a lot of you. What I do feel as well is um, I feel a lot of you, especially if you are like in a very, if you were making a lot of money, I feel a lot of money flowing out very, very quickly, like large quantities of money being spent very recklessly, okay? And this is mainly to bolster a public image, to project a certain image, a persona of yourself it, in order to impress somebody or in order to like, you know, uh, catch up to the standard of spending of the people that you hang out with in a social setting. So this is an energy that is very wasteful. It is also very extravagant. And I feel that for many of you, the this type of lifestyle is finally catching up to you. Where you're looking back and you're just like, wow, I, I dated these people that weren't really good for me. Or, you know, I spent a lot of money on people that were not like... Um, that were not deserving of it. Or I spent a lot of emotions in relationships that were not right for me. So I feel like you're going through this period of, um, of examination because in the past... I feel like, especially for Aries men in general, I feel that, you know, you uh, you were attracting people who were very materialistic. Very materialistic. They might have liked your public image. They might have, might have liked the fact that you're a big spender. And I feel that you were attracting the wrong type of uh, people in your life, love interests, and you were portraying yourself in a way that was not conducive for finding somebody who is authentic and true to you, okay? And then I feel like women, uh, Aries women, you were dating around quite a bit. And I feel like in the process of dating, though, I feel that you came across somebody that had a very, very big ego, and I feel that, you know, a lot of you were very captivated by this person. And I'm sensing that it could be like uh, another fire sign uh, or a water sign. So this is um, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. I am hesitant to say water sign mainly because I don't feel most water signs are very like, you know, like, um, it, it, like their energy is very shy. It's a little bit more subdued. So I feel like you might have, uh, a lot of you... Um, men, if you're dating women, I feel that you're interested in an, a water sign. And then for others of you who are uh, women, Aries women, dating men, I feel like you might have been attracted to another another um, fire sign, okay? And so that's Aries, Sagittarius, Leo. Somebody who is like very, very brave, very courageous, traveled a lot, and who has like a little bit of a big ego, uh, which brings us to the present moment. We do have the Nine of Swords as well as the Six of Swords. Now, the Six of Swords is kind of like moving away from a situation that was not good for you and charting new territory, traveling into the unknown. And, um, you know, this, this is a card about hope. This is a card about not knowing what's out there but willing to explore, okay? So this is a, a big card about taking risk as well. But this is not about, you know, being risky with the past. It's more about moving forward. And we have the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords indicates uh, anxiety, worries, being in a situation where there's a lot of uncertainty and you're not really sure how to proceed, okay? So both of these cards are kind of like in oppositions with one another. And I do sense like for many of you, if you are involved with an air sign right now, at this moment that we're speaking, I do feel like a lot of you are at a crossroads, whether or not to end the relationship or whether or not to continue in the relationship. On the one hand, I feel like a lot of you have had a situation where you have hashed things out with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. 
And then on the other hand, I feel like you're still trying to decide, like, do I really still love this person? Do I really want to be with them still? On the one hand, they're putting in the effort and, you know, things are going well right now. But what's in store for us in the future? So you're starting to think a long time. You can't really have that strong emotional connection. And I feel that you were dating somebody who had a very, very big ego. And there wasn't uh, enough space for you in that relationship. And I feel that you're putting an end to a lot of relationships, like people that you're kind of marginally seeing but not serious with. I feel that a lot of you, you're letting them kind of like gradually leave your life. If they have been false and you haven't really been contacting them, I feel like they're kind of gradually dropping off, okay? We do have the tower as well, and the tower indicates to me things that were built on faulty foundations are quickly crumbling down. So people that, you know, that you had fun with, but they didn't really pan out when it comes to long-term uh, romantic prospects, I feel that they're going to be kind of like left behind in your life right now. We also have what's linked up here. Um, I put out some cards for the tower because it's a major arcana card. It usually indi indicates some type of instability, some type of revelation, some type of news that's coming through that's causing a lot of stress and strain. I do feel for some of you, you might hear about some health issues as it pertains to an ex-boyfriend, uh, girlfriend. And then others of you, I do feel there is some type of major argument coming through, especially if you're dealing with an air sign. I do see like talks about separation, talks about where we're going to be for the holidays, your house or my house. And then there's like third party, you know, like um, from your respective ends, you might not agree on whether or not to move forward, have children, take the relationships to the next level. So there's a lot of instability if you are currently dealing with an uh, air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And then others of you, there might be some news from the past as it pertains to some type of health issues, okay? So this is like diagnoses and, you know, even like... Um, there, I'm feeling a health scare affecting one partner or the other or affecting both partners. So I do feel something coming through like that where you are being a little bit more responsible when it comes to self-protection, protecting yourself, protecting your partner, or be even being a little bit more cautious about, you know, uh, sexual habits, which is good. It's always a good thing. So I do feel that, you know, start it at the beginning of the, uh, the month, okay? So get checked up and everything. It's also linked up here with the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles is um, it's a self-employed uh, type of situation in this deck when it comes to love, relationships, and things like that. Linking up with everything else. I feel like a lot of you, honestly, might have been traveling a lot or you were dealing with somebody where, you know, your work or their work is interfering in the ability for you both to meet. So there is going to be some arguments and, you know, harsh words thrown about. Uh, and I feel like accusations about, you know, like, oh, you don't care about me. You're working all the time. So I do feel work finances and like work schedule, hours and um, things like that interfering in a relationship and in, in interfering your, in your ability to connect with another person or to spend time with another person. A lot of you are either self-employed or you're dating somebody who is self-employed and it's really difficult. You might live a distance away. And it's really difficult for you to come together. And when you actually have time to come together, somebody is either on call for work or they have unexpected visitors when it comes to the work environment. Um, I do see disagreements about attending uh, work functions together as a unit. So you might have your own functions, they might have their own functions, or they don't want to meet you on the professional front because they don't enjoy it. So I do see something about work interfering in, in a relationship. There might be arguments coming through, okay? So just be very careful and uh, be very patient with one another this month. This Mercury Retrograde is going to be quite heavy as well. So what's coming through in the... Um, What's coming in? We have the Seven of uh, Wands, and the Seven of Wands is a situation where you are going to have to fight for the things that you really believe in. And I feel that a lot of you are going through, you know, the dating environment, and you're going to have to root out or at least um, weed out the people that are no longer serving, um, you know, that, that can no longer give you what you want on an emotional level. So I feel like, you know, it's like leaving behind uh, driftwood, leaving behind dead weight, and sorting out your, your relationships 
to see who's actually real, to see what's actually important to you, okay? So this is a card about standing up for yourself. If you've been kind of like, um, I feel like a lot of you have been very supportive of another person. Um, I feel like you prop them up, you know, and then they might be right, like too busy for you at this point. And I feel like you're making some demands about what you want out of a relationship, how much time you're spending together and things like that. I don't see people physically breaking up. I do see arguments coming through. And then, you know, they're saying to defend your values, defend your beliefs. And especially if you feel like you've been neglected, if you felt alone in the relationship, even though you're still with somebody. It's really important for you to try to defend what you feel is like rightfully owed to you in a, as a relationship partner because I feel a lot of you are putting so much of yourself into a relationship and the other person might be temporarily like MIA or they're taking you for granted or they're not aware of everything that you're putting in mainly because they're a little bit more self-centered. So I do sense that can go both ways. You know, one person can be more, you can be the one that's a little bit more self-centered. So I do feel some balancing act is required for this month as it pertains to those of you who are in a serious relationship or in a marriage. Okay, work-life balance is really important. Um, compromising is also very, very important. And I do sense a lot of you might be involved with somebody who is living at a distance and you're trying to navigate how to meet up, how to be together in this relationship. I feel that, um, I feel a very strong Leo vibe as some of the partners that you're dealing with. Okay, some arguments coming through with Leos specifically and then some arguments coming through with people who are um who are uh, air signs aquarius gemini and libras that you are dating if you are single for this month i feel that there is very very high potential for like getting swept off your feet okay i do see a heavy air sign and a heavy fire sign coming through so Aquari aquarius gemini libra sagittarius aries and leo that those are coming through and I do sense as well, um, at social functions, um, it's really important to be careful what you say. I do see some mishap, some embarrassment at social functions. So, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Don't dwell on it too much. But I do see that coming through as, you know, as you're going out single and, and try to date, okay? But I don't feel that it's going to be major. It's not going to uh, be like a deal breaker in any type of social engagement, um, okay? So I do wish you all the best.